All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of 20 to Midnight. I am your dungeon master, Gabriel Urbina. And I am Beth Eyre. I'm playing Helena Hailstorm, a human fighter from the Valdron Empire, and I'm here in London, London Town. And I am Emma Sherjarko playing Cal from Bassaranath, who is a tiefling sorcerer, and I am here in the land of enchantment, Santa Fe, New Mexico. And my name is Mike Schubert. I will be playing the role of Satasan Kurtum, who's a human bard from Kelmultran, and I'm coming to you once again from New York City, keeping the streak alive. We're setting mm. records here. Mm-hmm. Very, very nice, mm-hmm. folks. Very, very nice. Uh, I had a quick bit of DM bookkeeping just because a couple of folks wrote in. At the end of the second to last episode that I did, I introduced the blonde leader in the Solonese Navy as Admiral Ralak. And then in the last episode that we did, I switched and called her Admiral Razak. Um, um, Razak is yeah. correct. I uh, hastily Razak. glanced at my notes, I think, on the second to last episode and saw a Z as an L. Um, and as, it in, was... as in Razak Valenti. If if this helps you, if 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 this is a good mnemonic for you, we can go with that. Sure, yes, Sorry. <laughs> yes. As Resenting. if you are, as if you were, as if, as if you are at a sports Resenting. game where Zach was playing and you were really trying to psych him up, and so you were like, "Rah, Zach Valenti!" Like, yes, <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly like sense. that. Okay, great. Um, but yes, but I was clearly running between things and just kind of teetering on the edge of um, completely losing track of everything. But the right name for this character, if we ever see them again, uh, is Admiral Razak with a Z in the middle of their name. If, if we ever see them again. <laughs> what a great spot. I mean, maybe, maybe not. They're gone. Like, you know, we'll, we'll figure it out. Um... But speaking of which, yeah, let's talk about what happened last time. You had um, ended up in the hands of the Solonese Navy, taken into a Solonese warship, uh, which you eventually learned was a member of the Solonese, um, the dreaded silent fleet that is the Solonese Information and Intelligence Division, um, and the woman that had apprehended you, who seemed to be in charge, was an infamous admiral in the Solonese Intelligence Division named Razak. Um, She uh, seemed to be courteous at first, including kind of getting Satis to very reasonably calm down Avanzada before she burnt down the ship as the dragons were restrained separately from you all. Um... And mostly asking some polite questions, including some questions about the letters that you recovered from the Rakshasa, um, showing you that she could read Quaileth, the language of the Mind Flayers, a thing that Maeve had previously told you would be quite a feat if you did not have uh, creatures like Mind Flayers or Rakshasas around. But then things took a slight turn for the Devious as she... um, planted a spy in the cells with you guys, who first introduced himself as an old pirate named Celios, eventually revealed to be just a member of the Solonese Navy named Jora, who was able to kind of report back to her a lot of the things that you guys said and were trying to kind of keep secret between you. And you folks seemed quite stuck until our old fey friend, the curator, dropped by and offered you a bit of a devil's bargain to get out of this pickle. He took a little bit of intelligence and strength and charisma from you all and let you out of yourselves just in time to kind of make a daring escape, recovering your equipment, stealing a little cutter that was attached to, like, the big Solonese warship, dragging Jorah, who tried to stop you along, and then restraining him and getting away from the Solonese warship, now ending up in open waters in the dead of the night, but not before stopping Admiral Razak from, through magical means, teleporting away from the ship and taking your three dragons with her. Um, And um, despite your having charmed him 
Admiral, or excuse me, Captain Blackwood, who was in charge of the ship itself, would not tell you where she had gone. Um, and I think that we're picking things up pretty much right where we left them. You are on this little cutter. Uh, Jorah is currently tied to the mast, restrained. You have all of your gear and all your possessions back. Your abilities are back online. You are no longer restrained in anti-magic cells. Um, but this now leads me to the key question of the day. Can any of you sail? Is that uh, a skill on D and D Beyond that I should know about, or? <laughs> um, so basically, I think to be able to operate something like this, I think what I'm really asking is, do any of you have the sailor background, or if you look under your proficiencies list, do you see anything related to sailing or boating or things of that sort? Uh, I got nothing. All I have is armor, weapons, tools, and languages with proficiencies. So, nope. Uh, I don't think. Yeah. Damn. Do I have proficiency in anything? What do I say proficiency? I mean, so, like, you will, so you have proficiency, for example, in, like, history and in performance and, like, sort of anything if you look at your mm. skill list that has, like, the okay. black mark next to them. Uh, those are okay. all proficiencies. Um, okay. But sometimes okay. certain backgrounds will kind of go mm -hmm. like, well, you know, if you're a sailor, you're maybe not learning a lot of the things that are in the um, traditional skill list, but you would be picking up this kind of like specialized skill that is sailing. Um, I think that like the best example of that is uh, if you are a certain kind of thief, you'll have a proficiency in thieves tools. And that is something that is like, well... Okay, so I do this have that. cannot, yeah, sure, like we cannot <laughs> abstract this as just being dexterity. This requires kind of a little bit of specialized right. knowledge on how to use these tools. So we'll just kind of like create an additional category for them. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, well, yeah, I don't know. I got nothing. Yeah, yeah, yes. I don't think I do either. Absolutely Similar. terrific. Great. Yeah, it's going to yeah. go great though. We're, we're a scrappy bunch. Yeah. yeah. We are. We're a quick steady. And presumably, Jura can sail some. Yeah. If he wants to live. Which... Jora is currently tied to the mast of the ship. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, but he wouldn't uh -huh. want that ship to be underwater with him tied to it. Yeah. Okay, so is this a conversation that is happening in character? Yeah, I think we... Yeah, 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 I think we yeah, tell yeah. him... <laughs> Can I just back up? What is this sh this cutter like? It's like a it, it imagine sort of like a very tiny like strike sailboat. It's meant to be sailed by like a very tiny crew. I think cutters are. I could be dead wrong. I am not someone that knows a lot about navies beyond just kind of like what you pick up by reading fantasy novels. But my understanding is that a cutter is like a very very tiny ship meant to sort of like be like a striker or just made for like fast little applications and it is designed to be sailed by a very very small crew whereas like the warship requires like tens and tens of people to be properly manned this is sort of something that is like a much smaller craft cool okay okay oh. i think we turn to jordan and basically say like all right we will let you go once we get to land, but the key first step is getting to land. So if you help us, we'll help you by not killing you, and also you can help yourself by not letting this boat sink and killing yeah. us all. And why would I believe anything that the three of you have to say? Because why would we be lying about not knowing how to sail a boat? What do we have to gain by saying, hello, sir, we do not know how to sail a boat. Help us sail a boat. Where's the Where's the advantage? Yeah, yeah exactly. So you've done most of the lying at this point. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> if we're going to cooperate on this front, excuse me, he should not be gesturing with his hands. He's tied to the mast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I need to make a couple of things clear to you and lower some expectations. This is a short 
range craft that is not meant to be sailed for long distances and long stretches of time in the open sea. It is a good refuge for where we are right now, but that's not going to last. We need to get to land quickly. Especially because, well, uh, how many provisions did you grab before you boosted this ship? I think, I think zero. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But are there still some, some snacks in our packs? Sure. Yeah, you have some provisions some in snacks. your packs. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Great. Um, right. But basically, we need to make port within the next two, three, four days, absolutely maximum. This is not a. Okay. This is the ship is not going to be able to sail as quickly or as expediently as something like the Whisper. The only place that I can reasonably get the ship to is Summerstone. That is the only place that I think we can sail to, especially without navigational equipment, which I don't think that you have either. So, that is what I can offer. I can get us to land, I can get us there safely, but it will be to the same place the Whisper is going to. But I think that that beats dying at the bottom of the ocean. Or leave me tied here and do as you will. Team Huddle. Yeah. Mm hmm So. Yeah, I don't like that. We gotta go somewhere, I guess, and we want our dragons back. Yeah. But she took our she took our dragons to Basarana, didn't she? I think we think mm -hmm. that yeah. Yeah. Where would would uh would we know would Cal know maybe where Summerstone is in relation to Basarana? Yeah. So, okay. So, what is the fastest way to do this? Um. So. <laughs> Imagine sort of a horizontal sheet of paper that is like a map of the eastern side of Kelderen. Um, yes. So the um, Teldorath where you were is at the very, very tip northern top of the sheet of paper. And okay. then Seldoran, the capital of Basarnath, is at the very bottom, the southmost point of the sheet of paper. About a third of the way between, a third of the way after you would leave the Teldorath and are sailing down south, you have a very large island that is Soliana uh, to the east of Kelderen. Um, and on the western shore of Soliana, there is the port of Summerstone. You are presumably some amount of sailing away from there. Um, but. I don't think you would, you would even need to roll for this. Like, it kind of squares with what he's telling you, given how long you were, you've been at sea, given sort of, like, where you are and where you were going. It does not seem like crazy subterfuge to say that, like, the nearest viable port is Summerstone. Okay. Well, what do you think? It does seem safer, and I suppose we could figure out where to go from there. Right. I'm trying to think Everybody if... Everybody roll me if, a quick d20, sorry to interrupt, Mike. Sure. 11. 17. 1. What? What? Uh, <laughs> Emma, cover your ears before I tell yeah. <laughs> Mike yeah. what he sees. Uh, take your headphones off. No, 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 no. No, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> okay. Come back, come back. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I don't know what the f funny crit fail for this is. Um, yeah. But, Mike, you do notice that um, towards the back of sort of like the little deck area for the ship, there is what looks like perhaps a bag of supplies that was already on um, this little cutter. And there's even sort of like a little kind of like cabin area in the back where there may be other things. Um, so like you have not yet like sort of like done a like super thorough search of the ship itself. 
I would love to conduct a super thorough search and investigate. Roll me that investigation check, baby. Let's do it. I think Cal is just like mesmerized by the ocean waves. Like, ooh, pretty. Okay, that's a 18. Cool. Uh, yeah. So the ship is not quite as bare bones as it first appears. Um, there are, you know, sort of a couple of um, what look like basic repair supplies in the bag that is on the deck. Sort of something that is like a hammer, some nails, some pieces of timber, some rope, some uh, winches, like everything that you kind of, that you imagine a someone with some shipbuilding experience would need to kind of just like very quickly solve a problem. Um, within the cabin itself that is very rudimentary and sort of only has like six hammocks and some bags on the floor. Um, you do find a little bit of hardtack um, and a couple of jars of what look like fresh water, which is very good for your survivability. Although probably not more than what you would need for a day or two out in the open sea. Um, I don't think that you've ever had to worry about water up until this point. Um, because you've always been sort of traveling by land. Um, you also spot some harpoons um, in what looks to you like three big kind of crude versions of the pistol that you took from Jora. Uh, roll me an intelligence check with advantage. I think that Sadus would, given his background, maybe be able to recognize what these are. That's fine. And that is that. So that would be, um, that would be a nine. It's some kind of gunpowder device. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> but that is what you discover. Okay, I would re Satis would relay that to the team and say, okay, it looks like we're pretty well stocked in case things go bad. I don't know that we have enough to go farther than where uh, the closest port is, but at least we do have adequate supplies back here in case something goes wrong along the way. Hey. Good to know. That's great news. Mm -hmm. It is great news. Mm -hmm. I do probably feel like we're probably best bet going to that closest port and then seeing if we can, I don't know, find another ship to take that would last longer, yeah. find another way. Like, I, I think if we can go or there and maybe... at least restock and resupply, gather... Yeah. Properly prep for a longer journey, then yes. Yeah. But maybe we go and steal a boat? You know, I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, sounds I, like I, so much fun. Could be fun. Uh, <laughs> quick, 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 quick insight check, everyone. Okie dokie. That's an 11. Okay. I have a two. Okay. Six. Cool, as you were saying. <laughs> oh, dear. Great. This sounds great to Helena. Yeah, yeah. I, I think... Stealing a boat is just how to get this frustrated energy that I have about them stealing our babies. Yeah. Baby from the Quick DM <laughs> check. After you steal the boat, who is going to sail it? Yeah. That is. It maybe we can find. So, I mean. <laughs> yeah, we we. We'll, we're we learning, think on we're our learning. Toe. Yeah, By the time toes. we arrive there, we'll learn so much about sailing exactly. from our friend that, that. Uh, that when we need to take the boat the other time, then we will yeah. know from our wonderful experience of boating. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe we'll, you know, charm Jora, so to speak. Yeah. Not necessarily we'll be... with magic, but with our personalities. Mm -hmm. And then we can be full musketeers. Yeah. yeah. Stuck with us forever. <laughs> oh, let me see actually one thing. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Um, okay, to make sure that Jorah is not bullshitting, can I cast Detect Thoughts? 
Yeah, great. Yeah, great idea. Um, yeah. It says you you learn from the surface the thought of the thoughts of this creature, what is most on their mind in the moment, um, and then as an action, I can shift it to his most deeper thoughts. Uh, if I probe deeper, they have to make a wisdom saving throw. Um, but basically, I would just like to to do that to see like, can we actually go somewhere else, or is he being honest that we ha- basically have to go the place we already totally, are totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, cool. Great idea. Um, I guess to spark that, I would, I would come back from our team huddle and, and little investigation and be like, okay, Jora. So we do have some supplies back here. Even with all this supplies and the ship, you don't think we could go to to Basaranath? You think the only place that we can not, make, not, not on, even not somewhere closer ship. along the way? Look, if you wanted. Too, we could try to sail for Valen port or maybe for one of the Veldrin ports on the other side of the Sapphire Sea. There is absolutely no way that this boat can sail all the way to Balsarana. No, sir, no way. This this okay. was not a craft that was made for that kind of journey. And I think that even sailing to Veldria would be quite a risk. Okay. Can Veldria I then detect does... thoughts to make sure he's not BSing me? <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, his, I think, like, surface-level thoughts are, oh, God, I hope that they don't make me go on some God's benight suicide mission. A ship like this will not <laughs> hold out for long on the open sea. Uh, it's fortunate that we're this close to Summerstone. The second that we get the, the rest of the Solonese troops, will be able to apprehend them. It's fortunate that it is the most heavily guarded Solony stronghold on that side of the continent, and that the militarization of that place will, etc., 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 like, you know, just kind of, like, running through, whoo! It's a, thank goodness that, like, the one place that we really can get to is the place where they are armed to the absolute teeth with the, you know, with the people that I like. Hmm. I will say for the spell, he does know that I probed his mind, if that changes anything. I think that that only happens if you probe deeper than the surface level Oh, if I go deeper. Thoughts, oh. Than the surface mm-hmm. then, then in Then in, in that case, I will not probe deeper because I feel like we, we've learned what we've learned and I'd rather him not know that I'm sure. reading his mind in case he thinks like, he, 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 we're going to get the one up on him since we have all these battalions. Mm-hmm. Cool. Okay. Well, I don't know about you, but... Taking a little bit of a risk and heading to Veldria sounds better to me. Uh, 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 again, it's dangerous. Uh, I'm not talking to you. I'm not talking to you. <laughs> well, 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 I'm not going to just not tell you. I, uh, again, as the only person qualified to sail this boat, I strongly, strongly dissuade you from... I'm sure, I'm sure you would. How far of a journey would it be there versus, uh, I'm sorry, where, what's the place? It's Summerstone. Summerstone. Yeah. Uh, how long would the journey be there versus uh, to Summerstone? Well, let me pull up the map of the continents one second. <laughs> yeah. I just want to know, like, is it worth the risk or should we really just No, kind of like, these right, are good fine. questions. I just want to be able to give you an actual answer. So give me one mm-hmm. second. And you did make that pretty, pretty map. <laughs> it's oh, a yeah. pretty. Yeah, shout out to the folks at Incarnate who gave me tools for a completely uh, artless being like myself to be able to make something like this. Um, okay, cool. Um, oof. yeah, he'll sort of go, it would probably, on, on a small vessel like this, probably say a week's time to sail to Linvale. Uh, which you, Helena, would know is the capital of Veldria. Um, mm-hmm. We could also make for Cloudfall. That's probably maybe 10, 12 days of sailing. Um, if you wanted to, we could just make for land, and I think that that would probably put us on a trajectory towards Linvale and maybe shave a day or two off of it, but then we would be just making land in the open countryside. Um, if you want somewhere where you might get a ship towards Baserinath, Linvale, or Cloudfall are probably your best two options. I like that better than... Uh... But once like again... Ten, ten days to sail there? 
Well, let's see. Like, again, this is a small like vessel. Days. It's not made to sort of sail at top speed in the open ocean. How long would you say it is It is fit to last? Three days, maybe. Mm. Okay, that's tricky then. Hmm. Well, what do you think, team? Do we just go I'm along with it and... I feel like we're going to get arrested if we, if we go to this yeah. incredibly... Um, yeah. Again, can we speed up the boat? I mean, it's... It's sails, it's wind. Can we, do we have any? I mean, I can kick real fast, but I don't think that's gonna help. Uh. I was looking, I don't think I have, I don't think I have anything that would, uh, that would help with that, unless, you know, by me pushing fire behind us it would move us forward <laughs> yeah this is where we need to get into some like tears like <laughs> like this is where we get into some like tears of the kingdom you know like if you have yeah. a flamethrower and you yeah. can capture the hot air <laughs> yeah. can yeah. you just kind of like yeah. create like a vapor based solution here or a steam based solution um yeah. i think that i'm gonna need you to tell me what the engineering situation there would be like I don't know. <laughs> no, I, I think yeah. I don't I don't think there's an easy way to make it go faster. Not with my magic at least. Everybody roll me a quick perception check, please. That would be a nineteen plus six for a twenty-five. Yes, Emma. A natural 20! Uh, Whoa, Whoa, we're so perceptive! We're so perceptive! One second, my mic is, or my uh, mouse is, there we go. Thank you. Very important. I'm it in is. 11. All right. No, uh, <laughs> Helena, you don't spot this, but Sadis and especially Cal, you do notice um, that you do catch Jora occasionally glancing at those um, gunpowder uh, pistol-like things that you found below decks in the cabin, Sadis. Well, I'm going to go ahead and grab those, give one what? to Satos and one to Helena, and keep one for myself. Hey, what we got here? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Okay, but he seems, roll me another seems... quick perception check. That would be a non-natural twenty. Fourteen plus six. Uh, Eighteen. Yes, Emma. Two. <laughs> uh, uh, I have seen the things, but what are they? The there. I do Whoa. not know. <laughs> uh, Mike, when you hear or when Sadis hears, when Cal goes, you know, um, we don't know what they are. Uh, mm -hmm. you sort of see a little bit of Jorah's um, stance change and relax a little bit. Mm, makes sense. Uh, all right, Cal, whatever, whatever they are, Jorah would be scared if we knew how to use them. So if we well, can try to I make should... sense of it. You play I'm going to look at Jorah and I say, so how does this work? If I, if I, you know, cast fire? Oh, at him, oh I would, that... I, I, I would, I would not do that if at all possible. Okay, okay. Uh, if what at if all we, possible. What if we just like took it and then, uh, I don't know, shot it straight up into the air? Uh, I would, then... I would, I think that that would be a terrible <laughs> waste of some very valuable gunpowder. Um, okay, so uh, you're powder, you're not huh? recommending that we would would shoot it upward and potentially no, you know have that that would be a bad situation. Uh, <laughs> why why would it is, be a bad is, situation? Is, is the Jorah? tech thought still running, Mike? <laughs> no, it's uh, oh actually let me look. Um, <laughs> it lasts for a minute, so I would say probably no. Uh, uh, but well, I, it's a, using well, my big my big adult brain, I think we found <laughs> flares and we should shoot flares and have someone save us and hope they don't hate us <laughs> uh, it, it's uh, the, 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 the weapons um you know defend off sahuagin and other dangerous creatures in this area 
Um, and wow. so you, you, uh, you know, you need them for things in uh, these waters. Do um, you fire them like like this? <laughs> yeah, but With don't that. fire them like that. Yes. But, but we, ha- but if I like we have. Firing. Well, here's the thing. We have three of them. We might as well just shoot one upward and just see what happens. And you know, maybe we would get saved by someone. His stance suddenly changes, or... and he goes, "Well, sure. If you if you want to do that, who am I to stop you? I'm just a guy tied to the mast." I think we're more likely to to uh, perhaps attract the people we don't want to come mm. to us, maybe. Then, uh... But what? No, no, no. I think I, if you're really curious here uh, in the middle of the night in the dark Solonese waters, uh, go ahead and <laughs> go ahead and try it <laughs> out. I don't know why I'm stopping you. I'm so sorry. I should not be uh, curbing okay, your curiosity. Okay. Oh no, 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 no. How, what? Uh, the this. The Solonese waters. Where does their boundary end? <laughs> oh, Could we Soliana maybe? is master of all waters. Um, that it, seems unfair. Uh, it's, it's not about fairness. It's about order. It's about bringing a sort of civilization and structure you to the untamed don't. oceans of the world. But you don't own all the waters. Yeah, the, that's the, right. The Valenjal is the supreme master of Prince of Tides. He is the ruler of the waters, but especially any ocean around Soliana is Solonese waters. Okay. Sure, but we'll get out of it at some yeah. point. Can I interest you in a pamphlet about Soli- Solonese supremacy? Absolutely. I happen to have one yeah, in my back yeah. pocket. Not. <laughs> what? It's very nicely printed, actually. Yeah. Give them that. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Our printing presses they do are, like are equal. Yeah. Team, what if... What, what if we were to sail the boat far away from potential baddies and hopefully towards the land of someone who might not immediately try to arrest us, then fire off these what I think are flare guns and I hope not just like gun guns, and maybe we are saved by someone else, but we would have to get, you know, sail in a little bit of a different direction first. Does that sound reasonable? Yeah, I mean as fun as pushing it right now would be. Yeah, no, that makes sense. We get away from here a little bit. We don't light things up until we're not going to get that ship we just escaped from back on our tail. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Seems yeah. smart. Mm-hmm. Right. Now, uh, uh, Jorah, he, how about this? We have we have three of these. How about if you help us go to a place where we could be safe, we would uh, not shoot one of them at your face. <laughs> uh, instead, you could come onto whatever ship uh, is with us, and then maybe find your way back to the Solonese friends, but uh, or at the very least, we would you know, try to help you out in some particular way. That. But if you help us get to safety, maybe we can keep you alive. I suppose that seems reasonable. And as a sign of respect, how would you feel about cutting me loose? Mm. So I can start to sail the ship before waves just batter it into a bad position. We have Team, all his I, weapons. Yeah, as he completely disarmed. Yeah, he's point? completely disarmed. He had uh, then, a saber and a pistol, both of which you took away from him. His pockets, Ooh, as so far as you can guns. see, send <laughs> him. As far as you can see, seem empty. Well, you have one pistol and three of these gunpowder situations. Things. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, uh, look, team, I think we cut him three. We cut him free. We kind of do the classic, like, point something intimidating at him in case he gets any ideas. But I think it's probably smart to let the only person who knows how to sail be able to actually man the ship as opposed to, you know, telling us how to. Yeah, that makes sense. Very good. Okay. All right. As long as we're I have the thing at him. Yes, we'll always have someone pointed something at him. Right. If he jumps in, I'm gonna get him back, and then he'll be tied up forever. That's right. That sounds quite reasonable. Yeah, forever. Jorah. Forever. Or at least until we can sail, which will be a long time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then yeah, let's uh, let's cut him free. Cool. All right. Uh, all right. Thank you. Now. Get out of the way. I need to reef these sails before we... And he just immediately starts kind of like running from one end of the ship to another. Starts like adjusting sails, you know, goes to the wheel, turns in a certain direction. 
and he will also kind of periodically just be like, Miss Vance, please pull that rope and hold it in place. Now I need over here and over. And it seems to just kind of be like an elaborate process of sailing this ship. But you do notice how very quickly the ship sort of almost like kind of locks into a course. And you begin to kind of like ride things sort of in going with the waves rather than sort of fighting against them as the ship had been done when there was no one at the wheel. Yeah. Cool. Good. Cool. Do at any it is basically two in the morning. Do you at any point go to sleep after a couple of after maybe like an hour of sort of, you know, needing you in various positions, Dora will sort of say, Ah, all right. I think that I can handle things pretty well from this point on, if you want to get some sleep. Huh. Nice try. <laughs> Uh, we could at least we, we could, could have, do it in shifts. We could do it in shifts and at least have at least one person awake and two people sleeping. That seems that seems prudent. I think we're quite formidable. I think I think we could take him one on one anyway. But I think especially with him having no weapons, I feel quite confident in our ability to take him one on one. I agree. <laughs> All right. Uh, and anyone, I I'm happy to stay awake uh, and let you two get some rest. Okay. Okay. That's very gentlemanly. You yes. better have this pistol thing. Sure. Yes, please. Thank you very much. Yep. And here's this harpoon. Oh, cool. Just just in case. <laughs> ah, looks cool. <laughs> you you, you yeah. do realize what those are for, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. Attacking <laughs> and hurting. Fishing. Those mm-hmm. are emergency harpoons in case we run out of provisions. Could oh, also great. be an emergency harpoon in case you get any ideas. There we go. Fair there enough. Fair go. enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jor, I'm starting to like him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this guy. Uh, cool. Yeah, you guys get some sleep. Um, all right. All right. So, yeah. So, uh, Cal and Helena, if you would like a short rest, you can take one if you need to. I don't know if you are... I think you might be at full health. Um, I'm not at full health. Not quite at full health just yet. Yeah. When did you take so... some damage? Eh, it doesn't matter. You took some damage. Sure. I took some damage. I think I think it was... I don't remember, but I'm at 31 out of 38. Okay. Huh. Something happened. I, like, fell or something. Oh, maybe when you, like, jumped into the ship. Oh, jumped into the ship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think that's exactly yeah. what it was. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay. But, uh, yeah, I suppose I could I could take a hit points worth of maybe, maybe two, two hit points worth of uh, rest. Or hit die worth of rest, rather. Sorry. All right, very good, very good. I like it. Okay, so that's eight. Okay, so I'm back up to full. Woo, woohoo! Beth, do you want to take? Uh... No, no. Uh, I'm good. I'm right. just gonna have a, a free sleep. All right, great. Uh, Satis, so they're gone for about six hours. Um, dawn comes. And then the sun rises. Do you and Jorah talk about anything? Or is it just kind of steely, watchful silence? No, I think I would try to talk to Jorah a little bit. Uh, There's no sense in not trying to have him maybe charm up to us a bit. So I would probably talk to him, but not necessarily be like giving away what we're up to. I would... I think Satis would ask, as he's a big nerd, he likes to learn, he would probably ask as many sailing-related questions as possible, you know, asking Jorah what's, what he's doing, strategy, that kind of stuff. Jorah will very happily explain the workings of the ship to you um, and will kind of, like, go into sort of like, oh, what I'm doing right now is I'm doing this over here, and if you wanted to kind of do it over here, it would go over there, and if you wanted to just kind of, like, have the boat go over there, you would do this, and you do this kind of knot to kind of prevent this over here and over there. Um, Probably just a D20, Mike. Sure. That's a two. 
Cool. Um, it's cool. a lot to absorb is I think like the biggest okay. thing. Like it is kind of, you know, like it, he is not, you know, he's his focus is still on the sailing. He's not doing kind of a good job of being like a good patient teacher. He is just kind of like disgorging information. Um, so, yeah. But, yeah, he will explain as much of the sailing as he can. And it is, of course, peppered with a lot of propaganda that is like, oh, you know, other types of ship, they don't they do it this way. But, like, in Soliana, we make them specifically like this. And that makes them faster. That makes them hardier. Like, our sails are made out of this particular kind of cloth that you can't get anywhere else. And that is what sort of gives them, like, this kind of flexibility and sturdiness and this and that and the other. So it is kind of still very peppered with, like... So have you considered becoming a subject of the Solonese Empire? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And how in the, all the many ways in which your life could be heavily improved by that. <laughs> um, but I think after a couple of hours, shift change, Helena and Cal have gotten six-ish hours of sleep and are back. It is now, I think, like the middle of the morning. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, that felt good. Yeah, it was great. Thank you. Uh, yeah. uh, th thank you. <laughs> uh, Satus, would you like to get some sleep? Try to sure. Get some sleep? Yeah, that would be we wonderful. Can keep an eye on this guy. Yeah, that sounds good. I'll uh, I'll I'll get some rest. Cool. Very nice. Uh, okay. Same question for Helena and Cal. What are you doing, and how much are you talking to Jora, who is? conspicuously yawning at various points as he yeah. sort of does things. Yeah. yeah. I'm happy to talk to him and also obviously it begs the question, could he go to sleep after this? Will he be able to keep us give us enough information to kind of keep it going? Absolutely not. Yeah. You, I... No, you're going to stay you're going to stay awake no. forever. Yeah, forever. I, I, I don't want forever. I, I don't want the ship to capsize and I, you know, you are all quick learners, but I really am the only person that can keep this boat afloat. But even a very impressive Solanese person like yourself surely can't stay awake forever. That's why I was very Listen. adamant about heading towards Summerstone. Um, look, maybe in a day or two we'll be able to just kind of find a nice stretch of water that is nice and calm, and we'll be able to tie off the wheel and maybe get me a couple of hours of rack time. But... These the waters of the Sapphire Sea are very choppy. I think that it's going to take at least another day or so of sailing towards Veldria if we want to avoid that. Well, we recently experienced a bout of exhaustion ourselves, so uh, I appreciate you making this sacrifice for our safety. Mm. And I'll just hold hold one of those big guns up, just. Not like pointing it at him, but not not pointing it at him. Not not pointing it at him. And then Romeo D twenty, both of you. Seventeen. Three Beth, you catch Three. a flash of it. You just catch sort of like the way that Jorah's eyes go in one side and then to the other. And then he sort of goes, no, oh, watch out. And he will suddenly, you know, just kind of like adjust the wheel and the ship will turn violently into a coming wave that splashes onto the ship. Uh, Cal, roll me a dexterity saving throw, please. Gosh, darn it. Dexterity saving throw, five. Cal, you get absolutely soaked and swept off your feet. <sighs> And crash on the ah! other side of the deck, but you are Whoa. absolutely, absolutely soaked. And Jordan sort of goes, sorry, sorry, that came a little bit out of nowhere. I'm so sorry. Apologies, apologies. I'm sure it did. And he stabilizes yeah. the ship. I... Cal, are you okay? Yeah. You sure? It's, it's not even enough to take a point of damage. You're just very wet. Yeah, just wet. I'm Jordan, gonna... I feel like maybe you kind of drove us into that wave there. No, no, no. Look, I'm, I'm sorry. It's it, These things are a little bit unpredictable. You kind of can't, you know, watch everything. I'm trying to multitask a lot of things simultaneously here. Are you trying to knock us off the ship? No, 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 no. Um, I would have a honey of a time sailing this on my own. Uh, I absolutely need the three of you here for my survival as well. 
Yeah. I'm sure you do. Just kind of wringing out my... my I didn't doubt we could, like, tie you to part of it again. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that would make us feel pretty secure. Yeah, and you can just tell us what to do. Uh, again, I, I would I would not advise it. I'm sure you wouldn't. As you look down, Cal, at a couple of your possessions that are also now soaked, you see yeah. the um, gunpowder device that you are holding yeah. now thoroughly, thoroughly soaked and rendered useless. Hmm. That seems like too much of a coincidence to it does me. seem pretty convenient, doesn't it? Yeah. As if you want to leave us with uh, no possibility of attracting attention or help. Yeah. Good thing that I don't need gunpowder. And I'm just going to, like, light a little fire. <laughs> Good thing I don't need gunpowder to hurt you. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yes. Sorry, I thought you were going to say that you didn't need gunpowder to get noticed in the open sea and I don't think that that fire would get noticed. You could hurt me with that. Yes. No, no, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, very I, downright terrifying. I, yes. No, I'd rather not get noticed, frankly, but I, uh, at least for not right now. But I could stand to hurt you a little bit if you keep throwing waves at me. And I'll quash the, the flame. <laughs> An hour goes by without much incident after that. Um, but now, a little while later, you two um, possibly notice something. Uh, roll me perception checks. Possibly notice something. Possibly notice something. Maybe the thing will just go by unremarked. Really? Uh, 14. 17. Nice. All right. With that, you both all of a sudden notice some flickering on the side of the ship. And when you take a look, you see that a large school of fish is sail is swimming sort of underneath and around the boat. Um, huh. And Jorah will sort of go, uh, that might be a good time to use those harpoons. We could always use more provisions and more supplies. On the little fishies. Yeah. On the little foodstuffs. I guess he's right. Well, There's yeah, I, I mean, I just feel like a harpoon is quite big and the fish don't seem that big, but um, I mean, I'm, like, I'm excited some, about like, fishing. Like, it's they're, not, they're, they're like, not like goldfish that are swimming next to the boat. They're big <laughs> okay, enough okay. that you can guppies. see them from the uh, deck of the cutter that you're on. Okay, I mean, maybe how about one of us hold the wheel steady and maybe you can uh, give a fishing demonstration? Um, I, There's not much to it. You sort of just hook a rope onto the harpoon and throw it in. Um, but Dylan, if you expert. wanted to hold the wheel, then Great. come this way. Yeah. Okay. Re Great. Re do you want to hold the wheel, Helena? Yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, Go for so it. really, really hold it steady. Like the biggest thing is just kind of like forward and just like keep it in this position. All right. You got it? All right. Good. Good. Uh, roll me a strength check, Beth. Okay, then. Uh, I have a 17. Yeah, that wheel is not going anywhere. You hold it down. It is stable as hell. You yeah. could be playing golf on this ship. With my um. toes. <laughs> <laughs> And so he will come over and sort of, you know, like, show you, Cal, kind of like, okay, so you wrap the rope around here, okay. Okay. and you just kind of, you know, that. aim this way and just mm -hmm. hook it right in, just kind of go whack, and he throws a harpoon, and a moment later, you know, wheels it up, and you see that the harpoon comes up now holding a big piece of tuna, um, yeah. or rather a whole Ooh. tuna, that he a just kind of, tuna. like, hoists up and unhooks and just drops it onto the deck, and he'll sort of go, there, now you try. Okay. And roll me okay. basically um, just like a d20 plus your dexterity. Okay. Go, go. Dexterity. Uh, 13. Yep, you're able to whack. It's a smaller fish, but you're able to like hook up another one. And so it goes, eh, eh, not bad. 
What's yeah, that cow. That? Fishing champion. Yeah, you want to give Thank it? A, you you want to give it another go? See how you do. Sure, I'll do one more, and then do you want to try, Helena? Um. Yeah, I guess. Okay, it's fun. Okay, so I'm gonna try again. Eighteen. Whack. With that, nice. you bring up sort of like a big, sort of you know, brightly colored tropical fish. Oh, it's so pretty. Uh, it'll be tastier than pretty. So it'll be great. Uh, looks like we'll be able to at least have some decent food tonight. Yeah, fish supper. Yeah, yeah one well, of you can get exciting. these skin. One of these can get. Uh, roll me a perception check, both of you. <laughs> Actually, uh, only you, Emma. You uh, you are at the wheel path, so you would not be part of this. Only, only me. Only you. Eight. Uh, you see how the fish suddenly <laughs> scatter and disappear from around the boat. Uh-oh. And... Huh. They must have gotten, uh... Must have gotten a wind of, uh, old fish champion up here. Way! <laughs> the fish are gone? The fish are gone, what? and you sort of see Jorah going, No. That's what not it. it. What's, what's wrong? Big fish? What would... And at that moment, dexterity save from both of you, please. Uh oh. Oh God. Uh, sixteen. Eight. You are knocked off your feet, Emma or Cal. Yep. And you are able to stay on your feet, Helena, as the ship suddenly rocked by a jolt. Um, Whoa. and then another jolt. And by this point, okay. Sadis, you are probably roused from your sleep because this is oh. a very jagged, sudden impact that hits this boat. In a oh, moment, how's it going, everyone? Ah! Oh. <laughs> and a moment later, you see it. The figure, the sort of dark outline underneath the waves of a 25-foot shark that Whoa. has started to round around the boat. Um, and has perhaps decided that you are more interesting prey than the school of fish that it just chased away. And you'll hear Jorah sort of go, ah, fuck. <laughs> Jorah, is that big? That looks big. Yeah, it's, uh, it's quite big. I, I'm thinking mm. that, I think that that's a Sekleth, uh, one of the giant fish that hunts in the Sapphire Sea. This is part of the reason why... It's not advisable to take small crafts out into this. They are at the mercy of predators like this one. But, but okay. we're not okay. tasty. We're, we're, we're a boat. Uh, yeah, we're... I think that it's quite keen to find out how tasty we are. All right. Well, do we just fight it or harpoon it? Any any thought? Or... Do we not even bother and get it. away from Kill it? Kill it oh, quite let's... quickly, we, please. We should, let's we do it. it. Yeah, yeah, Elena, give me back okay. the wheel. You deal with this thing. <laughs> Okay, then. <clears throat> Okie dokie. Don't drive us into any more waves, yeah? Please. And I think at this point, let's take a five-minute break before we okay. see how this goes. And before we, we will fight be a shark. Right back, uh, right after this, guys. So stay tuned. <laughs> 